Welcome to the Improvement and Services Committee meeting for today is April 12th. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. April 12th. All right, roll call. Uh, Alder Sawyer, I'm here. We have Alder Weary here. Alder Eck here. And Alder Campbell here. All present and accounted for. I'd like to have a motion for the approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Weary, do we have a second? Second, second by all direct. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. I'd like a motion for the approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Motion by Eck, second by Weary. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. All right, regular business. Consideration with possible action to authorize the purchase of 416 rain barrels and to approve the award to Earthmark LLC in the amount of $29,120 to implement a rain barrel program for Green Bay residents. Director. So in 2022, uh, we started our rain barrel program. There were 500 barrels that were purchased and distributed to residents. Uh, there is a balance on the sixty thousand uh, of the sixty thousand dollars that was approved to uh, fund the rain barrel program. So staff is recommending. This was a wildly popular program. We sold out in less than a day, and there were people calling in saying, "We'd like to get rain barrels." Uh, so we'd like to continue the program and exhaust the rest of that sixty thousand dollars. There's about uh, twenty nine thousand one hundred twenty dollars left in the fund. Uh, 416 sounds like a rather odd number. Mm -hmm. That's how many barrels fit on a truck. Yeah. So we're buying a truckload to minimize the shipping, uh, the shipping impact of the cost of shipping. So the staff does recommend approval of this. Okay, um, I know that a few of us might have a few questions. Alder Eck, did you want to start it off? Okay, sure. Um, so the 60,000, was that part of the ARPA funds? Some of it was ARPA funded and the rest was funded through the stormwater utility. Okay, and so this is basically using up the remaining balance? Correct. When you say sold out, that's why I did that, because it was, <laughs> it was free to the, right? Yeah. Well, we had purchased 500, we didn't know how popular, we didn't know what the demand for the program was going to be, so we started with 500, and like I said, I think it was a day and we sold out. So, um, my question is, do we have any kind of evidence of the effectiveness? We don't expect to see something that measurable because a rain barrel is relatively small. However, every little bit helps. And what we're trying to do is through the, through the personal implementation, some, a small step at home, help try to guide behaviors that will perpetuate additional ways of managing stormwater. It's it's more of a consciousness in, in getting people used to things that they can do to help mitigate stormwater effects because over time each of these things will add up and contribute towards less flooding events or you know things being overwhelming to, uh, rain events overwhelming the storm sewers. But it would take a lot. If we were just dealing with rain barrels, absolutely. I don't think we'd ever get there. If rain, if rain barrel were the answer, we wouldn't get to where we need to be. The rain barrel is an educational tool to help foster additional behaviors that will have those those cumulative effects. Now they do add up because every, every the water that goes into the rain barrel gets slowed down. Eventually, it'll come out of the rain barrel, and you can use it for watering your plants or what. Okay, so it lessens demand on the water system. And even if the rain barrel were to overtop and some of that water spills out and eventually finds its way uh, to the storm sewer, by the time it does that, the water that's fallen on the pavement, gone into the gutter and into the storm sewer is already gone. 99% of storm water management is actually time management. What you're doing is you're slowing that water down so other water has a chance to process through the system before this water gets there. And the rain barrel does accomplish that. Again, it's on a very it's a very micro scale. If every home in the city had one, you'd probably see some measurable effect. But you gotta start somewhere. I, okay, I think one you. of the, piggybacking off of what Alder X said, I think one of the questions we had was that, okay, let's say if every house had one of these, you know, I'm sure you, you could be, be able to measure something with that. Um, I, 
you know, in, in the price, seventy dollars. Now, again, this is monies that are already there, correct? That's correct. So we're just using that up. Yep. I, I think one of the things we had thought about is that moving forward in the future, you know, how would something like this be funded if people still, still wanted to do it? And I, I mean, I just looked up Menards and looked up how many, you know, the prices, of, and they, they had quite a few from zero to fifty bucks, fifty-one to a hundred. I mean, it was enough in the area that you know, if people wanted to purchase their own you know, over time, they yes. could do that. You know, as, I mean, as homeowners, we're always buying something, right, mm -hmm. for our house, always. I, I have a rain barrel, a couple of rain barrels. Yeah. Right. So I, what I'm saying is, it's the perception. You know, I think the idea that rain barrels are there to help mitigate, I think it's a great thing. But like I said, if it came down to a point where, hey, we we gotta have to have a line item in the budget for something like this. I think there would be a little different discussion. So that's my comment. Anybody else? Committee? Alder Campbell? I just want to say uh, on the purchase of, of, uh, and the money invested in some of this, um, just recently, and this is a little off, but I'll get around to my question here. So I got a couple people saying, do people, <laughs> two different people I talked to, do people if they have a sump pump, if they have, first question, if they have a sump pump, does it need to go into the sewer system or is it supposed to be outside? No, I thought it has to be into the sewer system and you can't put it outside. No, it does not have to be connected to the storm sewer does system. Does it? Unless it's creating a nuisance condition. Okay. What if just want to get this out of the way because it's spring. What if they don't even have a sump pump in their house and they're putting a new street in? People think they have to hook up and they have to put a sump pump in. Is this, is this about the rain barrels? Yeah, we got to stick I, to the, I, I know, yeah, but the, I'm saying if we take all this money here and try to aid to a more focused doing something that a sump pump runs every single day into the stormwater, I think it would be way more effective than a 55 gallon drum, is what I'm trying to say. Is no, that, I agree. That, that's what I'm trying I agree, to say. But like okay. I said, we're just focusing on this one small I know, right but now. I, I want to I say the money, and I'm asking would it next time be a little more directed toward helping out some of them people that that are the problem situations, you know? That's, that's another agenda item that could come up any time. Yeah. Sure. can. Oh, I'm sorry, well, we yeah, did do that in the past, right, for a little while, a year here, year there, we would do half price. We lowered the price of the hooking up to the, the mini, mini mini sewers. But that, that that's when folks have requested yeah. mini storm or when they've been ordered to due to nuisance conditions. Again, there's not a requirement um, that you be hooked yeah. to the sewer. If there are some areas in town where, uh, where the soils promote infiltration and Alder Weary's been around on the council long enough. We've had folks come and request um, that they not hook up to the sewer because of those soil conditions, and we've entertained those requests in the past as well. But we have probably only a year or two before it gets reversed, but we have lowered the cost. I don't know, whatever the fee is now, 1000 bucks. We lowered it to 500 for a year to try and encourage people and I don't know if you actually did or not but, but that's I think where that's you're getting at is do well, we rather put money towards talking the about the money but as yeah. an example of better ways to use the, the money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I know. Right. Okay. And I think I get it. in Alder Campbell we will be talking I'm sure we'll be talking about that in the future. I see where you're coming from. I mean we've got a lot of areas yeah, all of hundreds of thousands of gallons of water between my and my property and the neighbor's property and you know in another Five days, it'll be all gone because it's gonna, all going to dry up. Half of it's gone already because we don't have nothing in the ground. So hopefully, all these problems go away, right? Right, yeah. right, <laughs> right. All the rest. Um, but this has been earmarked for the rain barrels, so right. we couldn't change yeah. it up. That was just the point I was trying to make. But um, I guess can I put in a request that? The people that have flooding problems would be first to get first dibs. Like, can you figure out which areas? Because I, I mean, one of my neighbors got it, and she doesn't have a problem with flooding. I mean, I do because we're at. The, I mean, we have a problem because we're at the bottom of the hill as far right. as our sump pump all the time. 
we don't really have a flooding issue. But I guess my point is, our neighborhood we really don't have a flooding problem. Unfortunately, couldn't we have it somewhere. That's first come first. We sure. can't we can't put that kind of a stipulation out. We couldn't even put that stipulation. Uh, several years ago when we made sandbags available, we couldn't put that situation on the sandbags. We had to make it available to the community. I just feel yeah. like if we want to make a difference, wouldn't I, we put I, I, I understand, but as a, as a governmental doors. entity, there are certain things we can and can't do. So oh. the oh. no, so same, I mean, I thought you were going to hit this. So the same 500 people are going to ask for another one? No. I would be very surprised if they did. Yeah. And I mean, let's, let's go look for that. Well, I'm well, just you saying, have the should they get them or should someone new get them? Well, I agree with that. I kind of just assumed they wouldn't, but then again, who right. knows? Normally one per residence, you would think would be Well, and I'd, I'd have normal. to check. There may be some program requirements in there already because we're using the same program for last year, mm -hmm. and we may have limited how many somebody can have. So are they already spoken for, all of these? I don't believe so. People sign up online, or is it something? Yes. Like, okay. Well, they haven't or did released it. Right. We have we haven't we haven't built policy we, or we, we haven't put the first. acquisition together because we don't have the barrels to offer. We got to buy it first. Okay. Is this a single source, or is it just we had one vendor and that's it? Uh, there was a request for request for quotations that went out. I don't know if we received more or not. This is the report okay. that we got back from mm -hmm. the purchasing department. They were. So obviously there's seventy dollars for this, but you know there's like twenty different kinds out there. So that obviously some research was done. And Correct. This was considered for the price and for the style it was at seventy dollars. Well, before we best. before we put the program out last year, uh, Melissa Schmitz, the resiliency coordinator, did a lot of research on. We didn't want to have a barrel that would last six months and fall apart. So mm -hmm. similar type approach to when we researched the carts for automated garbage and recycling collection. There was a lot of upfront to make sure that what we were purchasing and handing out to folks was going to have some durability to it, right? I thought I thought so, but I just thought it was. Well, yeah. I, you know. Oh, go ahead. Um, because, you, like you said, what was it, Menards or Home Depot? Yeah. I know you can find for less than seventy, so that's why no, it sounds really bunch. high. There was a whole. Well, yeah. I'd say a majority. I'd say about half were under a hundred bucks, and half were over a hundred. So there were there was a range of. Yeah, it 70. doesn't say the size on here. Yeah, so I, I, I would just look in general. And I, no. You know, like I said, because the money's already there and we're, we're looking at that, that's fine. I'm just saying that in the future, if this program comes forward, it'll be a bit different discussion. Yes, I agree. So, all right, uh, committee, anything else? Otherwise, uh, I'd like somebody to bring a motion forward if they could. Motion to approve. <laughs> Okay, motion by Worry. already allocated second. funds for, for me. <laughs> okay, motion by Worry. Do we have a second? <laughs> yes. Huh? He's the chair. The second. Okay, you were kind of giving that look. He said it was your turn to second it. That no, was what he said. I usually don't, but. Okay, second by Campbell. Any other favor discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. Number two, consideration with possible action on the recommendation to select a consultant to provide professional engineering services for the citywide SLAM analysis and TMDL implementation plan update project. I actually wrote down what SLAM and TMDL meant because I didn't know it by heart. So I have it here. Sea level affecting marshes model. The TMDL is total maximum daily load. So with that, director. Hmm. Okay, uh, stormwater from the city's stormwater conveyance system is regulated under a uh, permit issued by the Wisconsin Dep Department of Natural Resources, referred to as the uh, MS4 permit, that's a municipal separate storm sewer system. Uh, because the city is located within the Lower Fox River Basin, we're also subject to the total maximum daily load TMDL requirements uh, for total phosphorus and total suspended solids from EPA. The DNR MS4 permit requires us to update our SLAM model uh, and TMDL implementation policy every five years prior to them reissuing the permit. We're due up for that type of a permit reissuance. Uh, so we went out, uh, pre obtained proposals from consultant engineers uh, to do the SLAM analysis and TMDL implementation model updates. Um, Included in the packet, we had the request for proposal that was submitted. Tonight, I handed out a large binder clip uh, of the actual proposals that we received. 
uh, RFP was sent out to 12 firms. We received five proposals. The firms were Brown and Caldwell, McMahon Associates, Wallace, Stantec Consulting Services, and Grave. Reviewed, uh, DPW staff reviewed and evaluated the proposals based on project scope, cost, and qualifications and experience. The proposal costs range from $95,674 to $149,632. Based on our review, we're recommending awarding the engineering services contract to Brown and Caldwell in the amount of $99,641. We believe that Brown Caldwell's selection provides the best value, value to the city based on their experience with recent projects and their qualifications. Brown Caldwell also performed these uh, computations and analysis for us in the past, so that we do have a working history with them and they are familiar with our model. Um, although they did complete the 2008 SLAM analysis, that was not part of what we used in the evaluation process. Uh, Brown and Caldwell just rose to the top as the best value for the city. I'm sorry, is that uh, the last time we did it then? It was 2000? In, yeah, in 18. 18. Oh, 18, yeah. Okay. Correct. Oh, thanks. Uh, so staff is making a recommendation to award to Brown and Caldwell, again, in the amount of uh, 99641 There is a professional services line item in the stormwater budget for this, uh, for the cycle of work. What's that? Committee, do you have any specific questions? Otherwise, like I said, uh, we could spend two hours reading this. So it's kind of the middle one you did. Was that the, were they the low or? No, they were not. They were not. They were the middle. The middle, okay. If you had to summarize it for the layperson, what's the number one thing you want to get out of this? Uh, the number one thing we want to get out of this is an update on the model and to take a look at the things that we have already implemented from the 18 plan, make sure those are taken out and put new implementation goals moving forward. Any, any areas in particular, mainly the ones that are, as you said in the title, that were susceptible to oh, citywide? It, this is a citywide model. The, the kicker in this is that we have to submit like October 31st. So these folks only have oh, a couple months to get this done. To the DNR or, or yes. to the state? Yes, well it's DNR for the MS4 permit issuance, uh, but again the TMDL is dictated by EPA but administered through DNR. Motion to approve. Motion by Ward. Motion to award. Uh, yes. Motion. Which way do you prefer it there? Uh, motion to award or just motion to approve? Which would mean the award? Yeah. To approve award of contract. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Alan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> by Ward. Do we have a second? By a second by Eck. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thank you for that. Well, I learned about SLAM and yeah. TMDL again. I like TMDL. That seems like it comes up every five years. Anyway, number three, so. consideration with possible action on a request by Department of Public Works to enter an, into a three-party contract between the city, R.A. Smith, and WSDOT for the design of Mather Street Reconstruction Project. Correct. So about a year ago, we came to you and identified that we had been selected by Wisconsin Department of Transportation to receive a uh, surface transportation block grant, SDBG fund, uh, for the reconstruction of Mather Street. As part of that SDBG funding, we have to design using the DOT design process. And our staff doesn't keep enough familiarity to do that work. We, we're fine in overseeing a consultant, managing a consultant, but the consultants actually keep that pencil sharp. Um, so we went out for proposals, uh, and those proposals were on what we refer to as a quality-based selection or QBS process. So with QBS, you take a look at the firm's qualifications, the amount of work of this type that they've done, pretty much everything but cost. And that's following DOT's uh, requirements. You're not allowed to identify costs during the proposal stage. Based on the quality, a select, we, we had a selection committee that got together. I believe the selection committee was on it. Thank you very much. Well, the story was on it because <laughs> we, when we do That's these selections, we try to include the alder of the district as one of the, the people uh, evaluating the proposals. 
Uh, so again, the consultant was selected. We made a recommendation back to um, to Wistot on who the, the selection was going to be. And after the selection, then Wistot sits down and they negotiate the cost uh, for the professional services contract. That professional services contract draft is in the, included in the packet. Uh, R.A. Smith is definitely a reputable company. Uh, they're down in Appleton. We've uh, done work with them uh, on other projects, and this is kind of their bread and butter. The total expenditure here, the design services are not to exceed $463,655.87. There's also uh, historical re uh, reconnaissance surveys not to exceed $3,930.84. Phase one hazardous material assessments uh, cost uh, those not to exceed $6,808.20. And title searches for any right of way acquisition that might be needed not to exceed $28,520. So the total amount is $502,894.91. This is a federal cost share, so when we got the SDBG grant, not only does it pay for 80% of construction, but it pays for 80% of the design. In addition to the design funds, there's also some DNR oversight that we need to pay for. So what we're looking at is about a 20% cost share on the, uh, on the design contract. That'll be about $100,000, $100,579, plus the Westheim review, review fees of $17,000. This money is budgeted in the DPW capital account. I guess one quick question. So on, on some of these projects, I know Gray Street some years ago, yep. I mean, 8020, right? Was Correct. It kind of an 8020. Do we have many of those coming around over time? It seems like I don't remember a whole lot of that, you know, where you have the, that proportion like that. What's oh, yeah. What's ratio? Webster, maybe? Webster? Yep. Okay, Webster. Uh, military, belt. Monroe actually was 100% funded by DOT because it's a connecting highway, state right, truck highway. If it's a highway. Um, Webster was an 80-20. This is an 80-20. Country Club Road's an 80-20. It was, does it have to be either a highway or some? It has to be collector or collector above. above. Okay. Above a collector. So Shawano, whenever it gets done? Shawano actually will be better than 80-20 because that is also a state trunk highway. That's going to be closer now. How many years ago was years? that? Four? We had to be six years out now. So right? Yeah. And when we were on their 10 year list, that was coming years ago. Well, they, they've actually got it programmed in 29 or 30. No, oh, but I think, let's see how old it might be. You have to make the state's list. I know. <laughs> and we're, we're on the list <laughs> both. Both Shano, uh, Shano Avenue's on that list, as is Main Street. Main Street between the Fox River and Baird, the same thing. We right. did Shano in 2006 and 2005 and then Main Street was resurfaced in 2008 the exact same way it's just Main hasn't delaminated to the same extent that um, yeah. well regardless we're moving forward so yes anything else uh, committee otherwise what's your pleasure on this motion to approve motion by act do we have a second second, second by Weary any other discussion all in favor please say aye aye, aye. 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 all opposed that passes we make it so Seems so complicated because of the. This is going to council, by the way, folks. Yeah. Tuesday, six o'clock. Thank you. Number four. Everyone really gets the packet. I just said it's complicated. Room. It's like you have it's twelve packets there. there. Right? Yeah. Right. And we'll probably return these. Believe me. Number four. Consideration with possible action on request by Department of Public Works to enter yeah. into a developer's agreement with Habitat for Humanity for the extension of Rookie Drive South and East to Richmond Street. Uh, and I, when I was just looking at that, is that more or less the cul-de-sac? Well, or, or go ahead. We've included a graphic in your packet, and I, I intentionally made it a little bit larger scale so you have a feel for where in the city this is. So this is off of Lime Kiln yeah. Road. Um, Lime Kiln and, and Manitowoc, this goes back towards um, okay. Imperial Pride neighborhood. Right. Okay, okay, so this is kind of related, but not really to the JBS project as well. Okay. Okay. So at the end of Ricky Drive, you can see that at Ricky and Vine, there's a cul-de-sac there. Plant Commission recently <laughs> took up some uh, action to vacate that cul-de-sac. Oh, right okay. So that cul-de-sac is no longer going to be there. 
and instead, Ricky Drive is going to extend to the south. You can see it says Green Bay, Greater Green Bay Habitat for Humanity right. Incorporated on that parcel. Ricky Drive will extend to the south and make a turn to the east and connect up to the stub of Richmond Street, okay. and they're going to develop housing lots in there. Okay. So they, uh, Habitat's acquired the parcel on the south end of Ricky. Uh, they intend to subdivide and create individual single-family homes in order to provide street access and municipal services. Uh, Ricky needs to be extended and connected to Richmond. To facilitate the schedule that Green Bay Habitat for Humanity wants, they want it in faster than we can get it in, so they're looking to do a developer's agreement, which is not uncommon for a residential subdivision. Um, in, there are three ways that, they, that that can be accomplished. Option one is you record a plat and the plat over to the city staff. We design it, bid it, build it, and levy assessments. Option two, a developer will hire a consultant to do the design, turn the design over to the city, we bid it, build it, and levy assessments. Or option three is the, or the developer hires a consultant to design it, we review the design, approve the design, they bid, build, and dedicate to the city. There are pros and cons of each way. Habitat has not yet identified which of the three options. I'm probably going to be speaking with them about 10 o'clock tomorrow morning to identify which of the three options. So they, they need would like to do to that initially. They What's that? They need to do that initially before Correct. they talk to the city. Well, no, normally we'd have had this hashed out, but there's a lot of moving parts on this one. Okay. So uh, what we're looking for is approval to enter into a developer's agreement utilizing option one, two, or three, whichever benefits uh, the schedule for Habitat for Humanity. Okay. Committee, uh, all the rest. I just want to, because I'm looking at the map, is it going to be kind of a curved road? Otherwise, if it went straight? It's going to be a J. So, or think of it as an L. But if it doesn't kind of curve at all, it's going to be really narrow on one side and then really... There low. will be a slight offset at Ricky and Vine. Okay. The road will shift over to the west slightly. So it's more down the center. Down the center. Okay, that and makes sense. And then make the, J, uh, make the turn into Richmond. Okay. So is Vine Street going to continue to the left with that, that pavement sin already? Right. No, actually, off of the cul-de-sac, if you look to the northwest of the cul-de-sac, that's a multi-family up there. That's okay. a large apartment complex. So all we need to do when we cut that cul-de-sac off at the at the west prop or west right-of-way line of Ricky Drive, mm -hmm. there the plans call for a, a new driveway to feed that. So the driveway will go into that. Okay. All right. Um, yep. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion by Act to approve. Do we have second? Second, second by Campbell. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. That passes unanimously. Number five, consideration with possible action on a request by Department of Public Works to award the following contracts at a staff level and report the award at the next Improvement Services Committee meeting. One at a time or both? Uh, both. Okay. Please. A is Parks 7 23 Bay Beach Nebulas. B is City Hall 1 23 Re Roofing. Didn't get one. Okay, so Nebula Z is the, is the new ride that Director Ditchett was just talking about that's coming this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the City Hall 1-23 re-roofing is a capital program uh, project that came out of uh, the Ad Hoc Facilities Committee. We've got a leak up around the penthouse on the roof of City Hall that needs to be uh, addressed. So with the meeting schedule uh, going into summer session, when these projects are going to come in, we would be looking at about a month delay in getting the contracts awarded, so staff is just looking for uh, approval to move forward, forward at a staff level. Okay. Not in the motion. We trust you. <laughs> I would like to think so. Motion to approve. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping you would say yes. <laughs> like if you wouldn't have, I'm like, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> he said second. Okay. So. Worry seconded by Campbell. All any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. Number six, report the award of the following contracts. A, resurfacing 1-23, including sewer and water. B, resurfacing 2-23, including sewer and water, correct? Okay, we've included the summary sheets from the bids in the packet. Uh, both surf resurfacing 1-23 and resurfacing 2-23 are part of our 2023 capital improvement program. 1-23, um, we had four bidders. 2-23, we also had four bidders uh, for resurfacing 1-23. Dorner Incorporated was the low responsive responsible bidder. 
and the contract amount was two million four hundred and seventy six thousand eight hundred ten dollars eighty seven cents resurfacing 2-23 the low response responsible bidder was the growth incorporated in the amount of two million eight hundred seventy nine thousand eight hundred thirty seven dollars seventy one cents uh, there's a variety of funds that are utilized to, cap, uh, to complete these projects. Green Bay Water Utility funds the water portion of the projects. The sanitary and storm improvements are funded by the respective capital improvement funds for each of those two utilities. And the pavement improvement are funded by a combination of the local vehicle registration fee and pavement capital construction plans. So staff recommends award to the two respective uh, low response and responsible bidders. Motion to approve. Motion by act. Second. Second by Campbell. Any other further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. All right. Um, eight. Report of actions taken by. I miss oh, one. Uh, yes, seven. I apologize. Number seven. Consideration of possible action to approve and accept the additional rights of way required for the reconstruction of School Place, Oak Street to 13th Avenue. Do I need to read all these off? Um, the, the parcels are 3-663, interest required fee, owner's name Ian Dermeyer for $1,400. The next one is 3-664 fee, Trevor Tipholt and Nikita J. Lorbrooks for $1,400. Director. So again, these are similar to uh, acquisitions we've had at recent meetings. This is the small script takes to get the sidewalk on the north side of school place back in the right of way. Motion approved. Motion by word. Second. Second by act. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. All right. Number eight. Report of actions taken by the Department of Public Works, granting of licenses, the sidewalk builder. Can you just say all of those? There, from A to M, there's, there's uh, how many do we have here? Yeah. Yeah. Two, four, <laughs> six, eight, ten. Oh, we have 13 different firms. Do I need to read all those out, Director? No, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Motion sure received by second. Second. By word. Second by back. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. Okay. All right. Number nine. Holding this off for Number nine. Oh, Consideration with possible action on the list of Department of Public Works projects to be included in the 2023 City of Green Bay Capital Improvement Plan held from the March 1st, wow. amongst well, other meetings in 2023. Like, so we had to hold it twice for you because you we care. Oh, remember missing it. Director. <laughs> and I apologize in reviewing the packet, I noticed that the packet actually has a 22 capital improvement program in it. I so tonight, before the meeting, I handed out. The handout that I gave you is actually the 23 program. Yeah. And in addition to the 23 program that we provided to you, uh, we provided, I was glad I talked to all the weary earlier this week because you reminded me of the chart. The <laughs> yeah. chart. And the chart goes back to 1999 and provides uh, you with both in numerical and a graph showing the amount of new construction, reconstruction, resurfacing, alley, then project, those are all projects that are funded by the city. Under the state column, that's the CDBG, or uh, not CDBG, SDBG that we were just talking about, uh, like Mather Street. Right. Uh, the total cost in pavements that we've expended for each of those program years, the total of all types, the total of reconstruct and resurface, so the total of all types is the total linear footage in that year. But the total of reconstruct and resurface is really that maintenance type work. Um, new, new construction, alley, and state are not included in those totals. Mm -hmm. New construction is not? Okay. So the total of all types is everything. Uh, but reconstruct and resurface, that excludes new construction, alley, and state, okay. which would not necessarily be our capital program. So we want to give you a feel for what our capital program is funding. And then in addition to lineal feet, we've converted into miles. And then the graph below is simply that yeah. same mileage chart sure. from the graphical form. So, so that's, oh, that's the historical perspective. Mm -hmm. Then taking a look at the actual program proposed for this year. So we've got 
uh, potentially some additional um, 2,500 linear feet of streets uh, to service a, we had a resident come in that was requesting some stormwater relief because they, there was water coming into his backyard. Right. And during that time, we identified that there was 167 acres of undeveloped property between his backyard and the escarpment. That 167 acres here is proposed for development by the Kosmoski Group, uh, Cos Development. So there's some a proposal there. Uh, we've been working with some other developers on Sitka Heights, uh, Grandview Place, and Excalibur, which are all carryover projects. Again, those projects don't exist if those developers don't have a need to sell lots. So we don't depend on those as part of our capital program, and a lot of these are done through those same kind of developers agreements that we were just talking about. So moving on to other streets for west side and, and east side, those are our local streets, and this represents our reconstruct program. So we're proposing in this year's program, school place between 13th and Oak. That's where we're acquiring the right of way that we just had on the last item. Uh, South Maple between 9th and its north end. School place between South Ashland and its west cul-de-sac. Howard Street between South a uh, Ashland Avenue and uh, Oakland Avenue and Oakland between Howard and Seymour. So that's all in that area in and around Seymour Park. And that's also tied to the Seymour Park stormwater project. Uh, on the east side, we're looking at Burner Street between North Irwin and Webster, Manitowoc Road between Greenbrier and its east terminal location. That would be, uh, if you're familiar with that part of town, that would be in front of World's Tap down to the Carpenters, Carpenters Union, right? Yeah, yeah. Ravine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, the Ravine, ravine the, 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 the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. North Irwin Avenue between St. Clair and its north end. Um, so that is on the south side of the East River. Um, down in the hole, there's an old um, sewer control structure down there. And this area is all gravel yet. So this is one of the few unpaved areas in the city. Uh, Finger Road between Superior Road and Challenger Drive, so that's immediately east of I-43. This is one of the areas that we're going to urbanize and put uh, curb and gutter in. And then carryover, uh, we had South Van Buren in the program last year, so that's a carryover project for this year. Going to page three of seven, uh, we have the, it's still listed as the roundabout. It's not actually a roundabout. It's just pavement improvements and uh, work on Hackerland and East Mason that we're doing collaboratively with the county. Uh, then we've also got funds in there for the continuing design of Mather Street and Country Club. Going to page four, um, we've got a backlog of, tra of traffic signal repairs. Uh, so that's all carryover funding. We're not recommending anything new there. Uh, we've got a Huron Road sidewalk project that was uh, approved by the Common Council a couple of years ago. Uh, we got a carryover project here with the citywide survey monuments. Uh, the general bridge maintenance, that's bridges all across the city. Uh, we left in the deck repairs, the Selene sealant, and then if you go a couple of lines down, you can see it's highlighted with the bridge inspection. Those originally were in the capital program, but in discussions with finance department, those are annual recurrent maintenance type activities, so they're removed from here. We want to show that they were removed from the program and actually funded uh, under our operating budget. Uh, the Baird Creek over the East River Bridge, uh, Robinson Avenue Pit Bridge. Uh, there's some painting of the steel and bearings that needs to be done for pro uh, protective maintenance there. Atkinson Drive, the girder and end bearings, that's a carryover project from last year. Uh, we're doing design of an overlay for the Henry Street Bridge over Baird Creek, so that's near the east side. Uh, design on the Larson Road Bridge, doing some bridge scour. Uh, repairs for at Moon Valley and on Taylor, so one bridge over Beaver Dam Creek on Taylor Street and another at Moon Valley Road and Bear Creek Road uh, or on the east side on Bear Creek. Uh, we've got another phase, you know, we've been picking away at uh, the hydraulic repairs on the Ray Ditch Key Memorial Bridge, uh, so we've got another $1.1 million in there. Uh, 
our part of the construction for the Chantel Street Bridge over Beaver Dam Creek this year. Uh, your lowest total cost is 600000 and our cost is one twenty. Um, then Main Street at the East River, uh, that would be down by East of Palms Higher. Yeah, right. Okay, it's down in that area. Yeah. Um, we got some expansion joints down there that are failing that need to be reconstructed. Getting into our annual projects, so we got the annual resurfacing streets, uh, pavement repairs for our resurfacing program. So that would be curb and gutter or minor repairs that have to be done on resurfacing streets before we actually resurface. Uh, patching and spray pothole patching. That's patches, asphalt patches that are larger than what our city crews, our street section, can do but they're not large enough to constitute a full resurfaced street. So if we have, um, we've done some rather large patches. Older story would remember we did some rather large ones on Bond Street over the past couple of years. That's where that <laughs> program comes in. Um, concrete repair citywide, that's uh, just random concrete pavements uh, that are in need of repair. Uh, mud jacking, typically the mud jacking is on curb and gutters. We try to mud jack before we reconstruct uh, that curb and gutter on resurfacing streets. Uh, then the sidewalks, new, new and replacement, and sidewalk. The new replacement is the complaint-based program. The citywide replacement is the proactive program. Again, you'll see there's a significant difference between the total cost of that contract and what the city cost is, uh, because most of that sidewalk work is uh, charged back against the residents. Going to page five, we get into our sewer projects. Uh, so we are looking at a replacement of the siphon on Grove Street. So there's two, the best way to think of a siphon for a, for a sewer is kind of like a J-trap in your sink. So the sewers are up at a higher level and then to get under the river, there's a siphon there that operates by gravity, water pulling in the downstream pipe actually sucks through the siphon. Um, those siphons date back to the 1920s, they're cast iron, and although we have been very good about keeping them clean and operational, they are at the end of their functional service life, and we would like to replace it with something other than a siphon. The siphons do have a tendency to clog at the bottom. Uh, so we're looking at a gravity sewer replacement there. Uh, there's also a million dollars uh, from last year that we're continuing to work on our infiltration and inflow. Uh, sanitary sewers, you don't want groundwater or surface water leaking through cracks in the pipe getting into the sanitary sewer because that winds up going up the wastewater treatment plant and we got to pay to treat clean water. That's not a good thing. So I and I reduction is, uh, is something we definitely want to do and we've got an engineer who's actually assigned that's his primary focus is on and I. Going into stormwater, uh, we've got the Seymour Park stormwater projects both east and west. Uh, we are looking at, it says rain barrel, but it's also rain gardens. What we're looking at doing is trying to incentivize people to go beyond the rain garden or rain barrel and start getting into rain gardens. Again, trying to get that water to be managed on the site in residential areas so it's not getting out into the storm sewer uh, and causing the flooding issues. Main Street flood design, so we continue to take a look at uh, ways to alleviate the flooding that we're seeing on Main Street down near the confluence there where Mason and Main come together. Uh, smoke testing and I&I. &I. Uh, so the I&I &I reduction program is actually implementation, that first million dollars. This 50000 is continuing investigations. Stormwater facility management, again, we've talked to you in the past about uh, contracts with NES and McMahon for vegetation management and then um, with our trapper to trap muskrats and things out of there so that we don't wind up with holes in our liners. Uh, that's some of the things that go on there. When the street sweepers are operating, they're sucking up dirt inside the sweeper and that's mixed with some amount of water so it's kind of a slushy wet sand if you want to think of it that way. And before we can dispose of that, we can't have free liquids in that waste when we drop that stuff off. And there's contaminants in it. There's some unburned fuel uh, from vehicle exhaust. There's paint from our uh, 
pavement markings, uh, things of that nature that require, we can't just dump it anywhere, it actually has to go to a landfill. So you gotta dry it out before it goes to a landfill. What we've been doing is taking that material and bringing it up to our west side yard waste center. And we've got a designated area. We stockpile it there, we let it drain, be watered, dry out, then we scoop it up and we have some haul it down to the landfill for us. DNR has been working with us on that and they are very strongly encouraging us to find something other than letting that water infiltrate into the ground. They want us to actually build a dewatering basin, dewater it, take the water and put it in a sanitary sewer because the water could potentially be infected by the, the sand and grit that we're sweeping up the street sweeper. So we've got some money set aside uh, to get a dewatering basin constructed. Um, Along with one of the subdivisions we talked about early out on Grandview, uh, we are anticipating that there will be a stormwater facility out there. We got a, a 1.5 million in there as a total project cost, but you'll notice it does say zero in city cost. That would be borne by the properties that are benefiting from that facility. Uh, and then some dredging out at our pond on Barina Creek. So Barina Creek, we're not actually dredging pond, or we're not actually dredging Barina Creek. We're dredging the Barina Creek Pond. That pond has been in existence for close to 20 years now. And functioning the way that it should, stormwater running into the pond, the, set, the particles have settled out. Well, those particles are starting to accumulate in the bottom, so we gotta clean that out and make the pond, restore the pond back to its original condition so there's room for sediment to fall out. So we're gonna have to dredge that and haul that material away. And getting back into our sewer annual projects, we got our sewer repair citywide. That there's funding for both sanitary and storm there. That's if we happen to notice that there's a sewer someplace. We need to have money out there to go out and take care of that. Uh, we got TV inspection of sewers. We do hire some of our uh, our televising out to contractors to supplement our own staff, typically to develop uh, to get the camera footage for those sewers for design for the following year projects. Uh, sewer rehabilitation for the resurfacing program. So we talked about the pavement costs. Here is the sewer costs that go along with our annual resurfacing program. Uh, we got $650,000 in there for mini storm, uh, $70,000 for root treatment uh, around the city. So that's where root infiltration in uh, sanitary sewers could cause backup. We hire Duke's Root Control to go in there and chemically treat the roots. And then chronic repair of chronic sewer repairs citywide when we do our, what we call our basin televising, we go out and identify areas that there are sewers. So we televise a sanitary uh, basin and we identify that there are some pipes in there that need some work, but we're not doing a street reconstruction or resurfacing. This is the funding that's used to go and make those repairs to the sewer where there's not a corresponding um, road project to go along with it. Then within the TIDs, uh, TIP, five, uh, TIP 5 is the shipyard, so we've still got that TIF money uh, there. That money's already been acquired. Uh, so that's sitting there just waiting for those projects to move forward. And then TIF 7, the Legends District Sidewalk, that project is nearing completion. Uh, we got the bump outs and the lighting in last year, but we'll finish the sidewalks off this year. So that's the program that we have proposed that program as it exists is I find my numbers. I had them written down here and I don't know where to put them. This one? There we go. Capital program on top of it. So we are at Yep. We're on the last page. The program this year is proposed to be 35,087 lineal feet or 6.64 uh, miles, which is larger than the program that we proposed last year at 31,035 feet or 5.88 miles. I know what all is going to ask me. Is no, I don't know offhand what the percentage of yeah. city streets is. I can't compute that for you, but offhand Wait, I don't know. I apologize for not having that. I should have. Can so is that you number, the number here? again? Can you say that number for this again? year? It's not. The total proposed for this year is 35,087. 35087. I care more about the miles. Miles 6.64. <laughs> 
What's that? That's the six point six four. Six point six four. This is for this for twenty twenty three. Okay. Okay. That's proposed. Proposed. that's the good news. Uh -oh. That's the <laughs> what was no, last year. No, no. What? No. Now I have to share the bad news, which is the last page. Okay. So with that last page, what we do is we summarize what those costs are, where the money's coming from. So our pavement program is about $11.7 million. There's $115,000 of Elric money coming back from the state. We got $1.75 million worth of carryover funding from last year. As we identified to you, uh, there's money in the vehicle registration fees. And some of that, $250,000, that has to go to our annual crack ceiling and asphalt. Um, I'm the wrong one again. Are we on period seven? This one? That's where I'm looking. That's what we got, Steve. This yeah. One? No. Okay. Yeah. This one? The one I handed out tonight. Yeah. Yeah, the last so, one. So, yeah, the numbers I. So, our program is $14.9 million. We got $115,000 coming back from Hellrip. There's $1.1 million in carryover funding and $3,010,000 that's coming back from the wheel tax fund. Again, we told you it was about 3.3. We were just trying to see if the, um, the wheel tax money was on the sheet, but I don't think it is. Vehicle registration. Oh, vehicle registration. That's what it says, right? Oh, I'm yeah. looking at my total one here. Yeah. Where? It doesn't say wheel tax. Oh, top yeah. left, right. 3 million. Bingo. Total payments. Oh, okay. Yeah. What Continue. we told you was the wheel tax was actually closer yeah. to 3.2 yeah. or yeah. so. 250,000 of that. We used to fund crack sealing and potable patch asphalt out of the operating budget that was moved into the wheel tax fund three or four years ago. So out of the 3.2, we had to take that 250,000 out, mm -hmm. but the remainder is here. So what that means is our program will require a bond issuance of $10,685,000 for pavement. Storm sewer, we got about a $13.175 million program. We got $4,075,000 in carryover funding. Uh, there's a million dollars of ARPA funding for the Seymour Park Ponds. Uh, and then stormwater utility kicks in an additional $2 million out of their operating budget. So we're looking at about $6.1 million bond request for storm sewers. Sanitary sewers program is eight million one hundred ninety thousand. There's five point five million in carryover funds, and the sanitary district, as part of their operating budget, contributes two million dollars a year towards capital programming. So there, we only have six hundred ninety thousand dollars worth of bond issue. And again, storm sewer and sanitary sewers, they cover their own debt service. That's not part of the levy support department. Parking ramp repairs. Uh, we got about a $700,000 program with $180,000 worth of carryover, so $520,000 worth of bond issue. That debt service is covered by the parking utility. DPW garage repairs and equipment. There's $1.985 million worth of repairs to our east and west side garages. $900,000 of that is mandated underground storage tank upgrades. Uh, we have single wall tanks for fueling our fleets, so police, fire, and DPW uh, and then all the passenger cars, so inspection or any other departments that have passenger fleet vehicles, those are all fueled out of either our east or west side garages. And the fuel tanks that we have in those garages are single wall tanks. DNR had told us in 2022, you need to upgrade the tanks. And we begged them, can we wait until 23 so we can get it into our bond issue? And they said, absolutely. But by December 31st of 23, you need to have those tanks upgraded or we're gonna shut you down. So that's $900,000 right there out of the 1.9. There's $500,000 in carryover, so we're looking at about just shy of $1.5 million for the garage repairs and equipment. So when you look at the summary in the center of the sheet, our total bond request, we're looking at about $19,480,000. Of that, $520,000 is parking division, $6.1 million is stormwater, $520,000 is sanitary sewer, leaving the levy supported borrowing of $12,170,000. I have been in contact with the finance department and the finance department has told me that our financial consultant Ellers has recommended that the total bond or the total debt issuance 
for the city of Green Bay for 2023 should be in the 13 to 13.2 million dollar range for the whole city for levy supported borrowing for the whole city so le levy support okay okay right. of that 13 to 13.2 million dollars approximately four million dollars of that goes towards fleet and equipment which leaves about nine to nine point two million dollars for levy supported capital improvement program for the entire city my request is 12.2 right my expectation when we go forward to finance committee we're probably looking at a dpw capital program uh they're going to probably grant us a bond request of somewhere between five and six oh. and i'm requesting 12. <laughs> So where does the rest come from? Sorry, we, will like to the question. we will likely have to cut our program. So what I did, I prepared a capital program meeting the requirements that the council has asked me to do. And the financial reality is, I don't think we're going to get funded. So I gave you the program you asked for, and we may have some work on it in the future. When's it go to finance? Two weeks from now. Okay. It wasn't delayed because of... No. Okay. Two weeks from yesterday. Okay. Okay. It's, it's part of their next meeting. So have you talked to anybody from finance yet on this? I have had quite a few conversations with the finance director about okay. it. The finance but not the folders on this, yeah. Correct. Okay, just right. Okay, I understand. So that finance director sorry, I don't know how to run that just jumped in. Used to All right. All no, right. um it's I, so it's gone up for like like a little over two million from 2022. Um, is it because of this? Un, well, I don't know what to say. Unexpected fuel upgrade, fuel system upgrade. I mean, that what, what happened? <laughs> That's what what happened? happened? Yeah, well, we are, we, are, <laughs> we, are, we are proposing more projects than we have in the past. Okay. And those projects are significantly more expensive than they have been in the past. We have, with the first four projects we've been out this year, we are seeing between 20 and 30% cost escalation from last year. So our, pay, our pavement repair projects are double what they were last year. Well, and, it, and the numbers have gone down. Um, I mean, when you look at you, you had like 11 point seven three in 2005. I mean, just example. To, yep. to, to, and we're down, we were 5.88 last year and possibly 6.64. Is, is that a normal? Is that normal? That's good. I mean, <laughs> that's good. Our good. Because I know we've always asked in the past like 3%. We'd like to see 3%. Now, is that even feasible? So no. This is probably in the 1.6 to 1.65 range. Yeah. Well, apparently yeah. not. Wow. Okay. Um, So what, what kind of magic? Oh, yeah, go ahead. What kind of magic can you work on this? <laughs> well, our recommendation is to approve this this program and forward it on to finance. And then what we'll, what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to have to sit down as a city, all the departments, and we're going to have to figure out what to what we can and what we can. So we're but passing the buck. My well, no, no. My recommendation. No, I'm, I'm teasing. teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. My recommendation at this point would be don't give anything up yeah. right now. Okay. Let's put our wish list in because yeah. I think everybody else is doing the same, yeah. and then let's see where the wish lists come out. Okay. So what you're All saying? A couple of questions here and there. Yep. Um, the legend sidewalks. I know with those sidewalks projects, we don't always get to do them when we want. But can we get them done before the Packer season? <laughs> the intent, bag the intent is to actually have them done significantly before that, except the Legacy Hotel project is also oh. going on. Yeah. Okay. And it doesn't make a lot of sense for us. Now, if we had put those sidewalks in three years ago, whatever Legacy breaks while they're doing their work, they would have to fix. But we know they're in that area, and if I put the sidewalks in now, they're going to break them. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to put sidewalk Perhaps. in and let it break them, okay? Makes sense. So I had a conversation with a contractor. Uh, the contractor is Rodak. And I had a conversation with Rodak today. We're going to have a meeting next week to talk about it. And what I've proposed to Rodak is there's TID money there to put the sidewalk in. And the TID will pay for the sidewalk the first time. 
what we're going to do is stop short of right at the property line for that legacy hotel project. And it's not fair to have my contractor sitting on hold until September. So we're going to release our contractor. I'm going to share our numbers with RODAC so that we can compare what their sidewalk numbers are versus mine. And I'm willing to pay them what I paid my contractor and have them put the sidewalks in in, a few, uh, in September when they're done running over things. That's all going to be blocked off and not open for pedestrian traffic anyway, so it's not really going to adversely impact anything. All the rest of the sidewalks will be done. Um, and it's just, it makes sense not to yeah. get in each other's way as long as the work gets done and, and the city's paying the same cost, yeah. then it works out. So that they're interested sense. in doing that. It sounds like the other part will be done. Correct. Is there a sidewalk across Farve behind the bar there? I don't know if there's enough room. Say, well, I don't think there. I think it just comes up. Pass. Pass. It's it's not pass. Pass. It comes up yeah. to Brett Favre Pass, but yeah. there's not enough. Yeah. Room. No, there's not enough. Room. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Will that Brett Favre Pass be closed when they're working on the hotel? Or I don't think so. Okay. okay. Well, since you brought up that area, <laughs> what is up with those bump outs and the the, the lights? I, it, was that requested to reduce speed or something? Because no, when they did the Legends oh, District sorry. plan. Oh, the Legends District plan called for that type of lighting. Okay. So when we started doing the design to get the site, this started off as just a sidewalk and lighting contract, okay? When we tried to locate the lights because of the industrial nature of what that used to be when it was an industrial park, the water main and the sanitary sewer, instead of being under the road, are in the terraces. Part of the redevelopment of that into the Legends District, Wisconsin Public Service took their overhead facilities and put them underground. Now we've got three or four utilities underground in the terrace. When we went to put the light poles in, there was no room for the lights. We physically had nowhere to put oh, the lights. seriously? Wow. So we looked at it, and it's one lane of traffic in each direction plus parking. So it was actually Matt Heck and Lyle. It was a brilliant idea. He said, We'll put a bump out in there. It slows the traffic down and it provides a nacelle to plant the light poles. So we staggered the, uh, the bump outs in. My plow drivers were a little concerned about it because yeah. they, we don't like the bump outs, it's bad. And I told the guys, don't worry about it, just plow straight through and after the storm, when we go out the day after the storm, we're doing a cleanup event, we can go out there with tractors and we can get in the bump outs with the tractors. Don't worry about the plow trucks. Just make a line. Just, just make yeah, so it actually I, worked out pretty well this time. Huh? Okay. Yeah, when I went, I was like, this is new because I, I hadn't been there for a while. And I, it just surprised me. Yeah, it didn't, start out as a a it didn't start speeding. out as a bump out. It started out as a place to put the lights so we could get the lights in. Wow. Okay, interesting. Well, like I said, especially with uh, terraces and that, I've seen that in just my district too where Got three or four different utilities or whatever in, in there, and it's <laughs> crazy. Yep. Anyway, um, continue. Well, I, well, I must them. say, oh. Oh. I want to add. Can mm -hmm. I add? Yeah, sure. I was, well, get us, I was trying to get <laughs> Mr. Burkle to go live, but he no. did a live thing like, We got <laughs> lights! <laughs> we got lights! Yeah, he's he's already did a video. So he's happy about them. He's, he's happy, and they're really bright. Right. He's like, Look at this, we can see where we're going. It was dark back there, for sure. I just wanted to tell him that I, you. <laughs> you're I was on. trying to get it, but you're on. Uh, he, he's, he has been exceedingly patient. We've been very appreciative of that. <laughs> He'll, he's happy. Yeah. If you haven't seen well, it, you should watch it because it's funny. Okay. Oh, we have a question. Sure. Yes. The list of asphalt streets. I know it's not in here. It just says you know a number, and it yes. Yeah. I got a couple. Is and that a list? Available? I, I always thought it should be in here, and I know why. And I, I've talked to you about it. We yeah. haven't had a chance to do it. With the the five year and annual capital program that goes to the finance committee, that's like a seven hundred page document yeah. or something like that. Every one of those has. We're going to cut and paste those streets into that document so that they're there. So. Oh, that's different than the ones listed. But so you're. I mean, could we? Yeah, because it's not like here for us to see, right? You know, the, which streets 
are on that resurfacing program this year? We can get it. We yeah. can get this year's list of streets. Yeah. I'll make sure that it's part of the council. Yeah, if, if you could. I council. think yes. everybody's looking for that. I right? would, like, I would where's the that. reconstruct, okay. but where are the resurfacing? Uh, yeah, it's always it's, your eyes are drawn to that. Because that will see in my district down there. Right. There's Well, there's a couple. We all have areas. But, so. We all have areas. But, so uh, with, motion to. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Well, I'm jumping in. Oh, yeah. Well, you're. No, I just, um, were there any other questions um, by committee? I'm just looking ahead. I think it might be worth looking at. You know, our budget's a whole different thing, but taking that quarter of a million back out of the wheel tax and putting it into our budgeted money so we can free up money towards, just towards uh, the, these hard pay. But that's a whole different discussion, but I, if we're always short on money for projects, there's a place to... Yes, you know, it is. Uh, you can make a note of that for finance to bring, bring it up. And then, well, isn't it set aside? Well, like well, most of it is, but we do take well, like a quarter of a million dollars to do potholes. Uh, oh, the but two maybe we should take that about. back out and put it into the yearly budget so we have that money for actual just... Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but that's a whole different... One little side note on, on the repaving. Uh, so is there a tried and true procedure for alders or what have you to say, director, these are the roads that I, you want we want you to look at the and best paser oh, are we the paser report <laughs> well I well I mean I've been asking for years for yeah. different roads and yeah. some work quick and others not so quick so I just want to know how did is there a tried and true way like get it to us by the end of April or whatever I don't know the best thing to do would be to just get us an email on streets that you wish for us to consider and we're we're always accepting that. We typically finalize that program around September or so for the following year. So as long as we get things in before the Well, September. we can't guarantee you it's going to make next year's. Okay, we've got a draft list of streets for resurfacing that goes out to 2028 right now. Is that a list we can look at, I would think? Sure. Yes, I'd like that too. And that's well, that's what I was talking about, yeah. really yeah. about. Yes. With that five-year capital program, we got to add the list of those streets in under the, the annual resurfacing program. So Hickory Hill still in it this year? Mm -hmm. What's that? Hickory Hill still in it this year? Redwood? I believe so. Oh, oh, oh. 100% Yeah, I Otherwise, that basket of cigars and, and Jameson that they sent up to your office <laughs> really went to waste. <laughs> You should have wow. that. That's how you do it. On the right. <laughs> I thought that was an ethics issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Somebody said that. Okay. okay. No, I was just I was going to make the clarification. I know it's not a promise, but it's nice to get an idea of what you're looking at. Yeah. Right. And again, we're pretty pretty well set on three years out. Uh, so the probability, unless there's something that really shakes the apple cart up. Um, the streets that we have proposed for resurfacing for the next three years, we're pretty solid on. If there's something that really does warrant the attention, we can make some modifications. St. Yeah. Agnes? Hey, you guys are putting out. I've got horrible. Steven. How's That's Steven looking? I'm anyway. pretty sure Steven's in the program within the next five years. Hey, you didn't respond to the same yeah, this question, <laughs> and he's jumping in. Sorry. No, it's okay. We're putting on the spot here, Stevens. I was talking is, about person. Is that document searchable anywhere? Or could you forward it to us? I think that'd be good to see that the five-year plan for streets. Yeah, we we could definitely get that. Because I mean, he said eight-year or whatever, whatever year. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought you said eight-year. No, <laughs> that's pretty far. Saint Agnes is on that one. Yeah, that was <laughs> <it. laughs> People's on. bumpers are falling off, but hey, we <laughs> eight years. I, obviously, we're all going to see this again anyway once it works its way back sure. through finance, right through the committee. Right, exactly. And so right now we're just approving this just to go to... And we don't want to pre-cut before we have to. But, right? we're but, just, I mean, our percentages on roads, and you know, I always help that. I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I'm just roughly, we were at like 1.5, then we dipped down to like 1.4, now we're back over 1.6 again, like 1.65 or 1.64, I don't know, roughly. I, we're at 400 and some miles, so I just used and 400, so my, my number's a little Yeah, that seems to be a fairly normal movement, well, so to speak. It's I the mean, best we've had since yeah. 2012. That was 7.8. We are trying to push it. Yeah. No, I, I realize that. I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes you we ask for something and you can say, well, that's not totally feasible, but you know, we just want just the truth on it as much as you can give us. You, you 
responded to what we asked for. Yeah, so with, we'll take it. With, with, with money, anything can be done. <laughs> it's just, unfortunately, I wish the cost was less, we could take more. But yeah, that's absolutely. Right. Well, hopefully that changes over time. All right. You know. well, we Anything else? Ones, Otherwise, we're the only ones looking at it. I yeah. read it online today that they're like, how are they going to get that done? Yeah. So All right. Let's entertain a motion here. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Second by Weary. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Thank aye. you very much. Yeah. Thank you, all the Weary, for your patience. Although it's really Thank our you patience. Thank you. Yeah, because we had to wait for you. But Man. hey. Yeah. Thank you for the I report. I miss you guys. I mean, you know, yeah. one well, trip we for all of us to a burger game would be <laughs> 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 yeah. Let's wait till the He was day. actually the only one here last time because Mark yes. and I were on. We were uh, sick. Yeah. Anyway, sick. number so 10, we really the consideration with possible action or uh, request by the Department uh, of Public yeah. Works to approve the FY 2024 lift bridge maintenance agreement between the city and the Wisconsin Department of Transportation director. So historically, the city and WSDOT have collaboratively owned and, op or, uh, and operated the three lift bridges, the Don A. Tillman Bridge on Mason Street, Park Star Memorial Bridge on Walnut, and the Rain Age Memorial Bridge on Main Street. Um, in the past, up until about four years ago, the city supplied the bridge standards. So we, we did the bridges, uh, did the lift bridges, operation of the lift bridges. Then during spring cleaning and, and fall cleaning, like what's happening today on Mason Street, uh, we supply the traffic control, DOT does a lot of the cleaning work. So there's some give and take there. Ever since DOT took over the operations of the bridges, we no longer supply the, the bridge tenders, but we still have maintenance work that needs to be done on, on our bridge, and we continue to supply the, uh, the traffic control for WSDOT when they're doing their work, uh, because WSDOT really doesn't have a traffic control uh, supplier. They don't have somebody on staff that can go and put drums or barrels up, and we know our downtown better than the county does, so it makes a lot more sense for us to do it. They do reimburse us. That's in the, the document that you'll see. Um, so this, every fiscal year, they have to re-up the agreement. WSDOT doesn't do multi-year contracts. So they send us a, an agreement, we bring it through. Uh, this is largely procedural. Again, this is something that we have enjoyed this relationship with WSDOT over the years. Uh, it does generate about 150. I think, oh, it's $15,000, so it's not much money, but they do help offset the cost of us uh, doing the, the traffic control for them. So staff does recommend uh, approving the request to execute and authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign the approval. Oh, you got oh, Chris, Chris Teske on there. There might be a back. Yeah. And <laughs> that, I'm glad you brought that up. I did respond to... Um, to Jason Lom at Wistot and let him know that the mayor's name was spelled wrong and oh, wow. that Celestine is the, the, the oh, we did receive yeah. updated documents okay, today good. but they weren't in time to get into the packet uh -huh. so we would recommend approval subject to editorial change. The word Scribner. And I motion to approve motion by subject to the changes of the Right. Do we have a second? But by Weary, any other discussion all in favor please say aye. 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 All opposed that passes. Unanimous. Well, we get informational. Director's report on recent activities of the Public Works Department. Okay, I have just a few things to advise you on tonight. Uh, first one is No Low May is upon us again. So we have the No Low May registration up and running. I got a point for that. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, I just got a, uh, there was something from Appleton that they're from Menasha. They're from Menasha. My wife said it was Apple that you saw it on the news, but regardless, they, they, they're disbanding the normal mail. So, did it pass? Because I thought Ap Appleton state? was one of the first communities to do that. Yes. And they were trying to look at, okay, is this going to work or not? You know, you got lawn versus you know, plants, that type of thing. And so they're disbanding it. So that's just a sideline to this. We will continue so. to evaluate this program we administer collaboratively with the city of De Pere. Uh, and their sustainability commission. So we are in constant contact with them about these types of programs to determine whether it's something we want to continue. Uh, we did feel that we wanted to give it another year here to see how things are working. Okay, so have you had mixed reviews or anything from last uh, year? Anything the, at the all? feedback we got was actually pretty positive. Okay. Um, <laughs> again, it's, it's, it's volunteer too. It's yeah, volunteer. It's, it's voluntary and you do have to register. You can't just let your grass go. Um, so you do have to come in, register, and get a sign. 
Um, so we know that you're intentionally doing this, not just slacking off on your yard maintenance. Um, again, the, the no mow is kind of a misnomer. It's reduce the mowing, let it get a little longer. And the mowing has, isn't really the driving factor. It's not using herbicides or pesticides. Letting flowering plants or dandelions even uh, come up in your lawn and providing early season habitat for pollinating species before the regular pollinating flowers come up. That's the intent of no mow paying. Uh, so it's not letting the grass get long, it's with that grass coming, uh, getting longer, some other species that have flowering capabilities mixed in with your grass typically are, are what the intent of no mow paying is. So the program uh, registration is up and running. Spring yard waste collection. We have social media out there uh, identifying and uh, release the press release. Spring yard waste collection curbside uh, program will run between April 24th and May 14th. And just remind folks if they ask that the material must be on the terrace, not in the street. Um, the reason for that, we always kind of shortcut it and say it's DNR related, okay? The, the actuality of it. The curbside collection program and the processing of that material at the yardway centers is funded by the stormwater utility, not by your tax dollars. If the stormwater fund is going to fund those activities, there has to be a benefit to the stormwater utility. And the benefit is, if the material is kept on the terrace, DNR gives us credit towards our MS4 permit. If the material is in the street, DNR gives us no credit towards the program. No credit towards the program, I can't justify spending stormwater money to pick up yard waste. So if we can't get the credit, I have to stop using stormwater money to pick the waste up and process it, and that's almost a million dollars that's got to go back on the tax lift. How tough is that though? I mean, they got thousands of homes. You know? mm -hmm. How do you? Do how, do you, how do you monitor that? Yeah, monitor. Well, when we're picking it up. When you're picking it up, I suppose. Yeah, when we're picking it up. We know whether it's on the terrace or out in the street. And what? we've been sending letters to folks. I just put mine out today. So but I mean, then do you tell the DNR? It's like telling on yourself almost. <laughs> What's going to happen? We, we, we would have done it two years ago, but the mayor's office asked us to make sure that we're giving folks ample warning. So we've gone for two years telling people, if you put it back in the street, you are subject to a citation for violating our ordinance. We're gonna get through this spring, when fall, the leaf collection comes around, we're gonna start issuing citations. But how does the DNR know if it's out there? Do they go around monitoring? I know you say you it's do self, it, but. It's self-reported, but we oh. are subject to uh, random inspection okay. by DNR staff. DNR's regional office right here in Green Bay. And they can just drive around. Did we bring Valerie in? Was Valerie at one of the recent meetings? No. Um, our new utility manager, Valerie Justin, is an ex uh, DNR employee. Mm -hmm. So DNR is around. They know. Yeah. Okay. Neighbors turn in neighbors too. I have one neighbor who films their neighbor. Oh, yeah. the street. You got five there. years in a row and they send me the video. <laughs> so they got to go and talk to the other neighbor and before we go to warn them. Watch the, the city's coming. So that's yeah. spring yard waste. Okay. Uh, and then just to give you all uh, an update, I had a conversation with our assistant city engineer today and notification went out this afternoon to our contractors for the street projects that did not get finished uh, last year that need to, the surface coat of asphalt uh, completed. Uh, we did notify those contractors today about restarting those projects. We anticipate those will all be finished by mid-May. Awesome. So hey, good news. That's good news. Nice. What do you, what'd you call that program again where you have potholes in that and it's not enough for resurfacing but you know there's large holes and patches? We, we call it contract patching. Contract patching, okay. Well, I, I'll remember that because I have some memories. All right, anything else? Thing? Well, is he done? Any projects at Colburn? Yes, sir? that's it. That's it, okay. Any projects at Colburn? EPW? <laughs> <laughs> not in the parks. That would be for parks. I yeah. actually heard the word Perkins today. Yes. I know. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got one question, by our favorite railroad East Manan person. So they just called me yesterday, <clears throat> the day before. So where all the railroad tracks run in the medium of <clears throat> the medium of uh, Eastman there, one way, two way mm -hmm. there. Um, must be TDS or something. Put in a whole bunch of fiber 
stuff in there? Could be. Could be AT and T. Well, it's pretty rented up, even though it's not her property. She doesn't want to look at it. She went out there and told the people, uh, "You're going to fix that, aren't you?" And they were like, "For why? We're, we're we're not responsible for it." She didn't like that answer, of course. Told her I would find out. I went drove by there tonight on the way. I mean, there's still snow piled up where they they'll get pushed. It. I mean, there it is pretty horrid looking. Like you can see it for blocks, big piles of dirt, big ruts. It's a railroad thing. What do I tell? Them? Railroad's not going to allow that to say like that. There will be there will be restoration. Well, that's what I told her. I mean, everything gets summer in two days. Everyone wants everything <laughs> dried up, flooded, grass cut, yeah. everything. It's like just give it a give it a couple. Yeah, days. It'll, it'll get restored. Yeah, I figured that. All right, are we ready? Uh, sure public hearings. We have no public hearings. Adjournment. Do we? Do we get a motion on? Is we got a receipt. Oh, received by yes. Received yeah. by. We got a motion. Uh, file by Weary. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, act. All in favor, please say aye. Thank you for that. Adjournment. Uh, we will be meeting next on April 26th. Uh, looked up the history. That's when John Wilkes Booth met his maker. Oh, Thank you on the that. 26th or for today? Well, for the You're telling us in advance. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, today I'm not sure. I, I didn't check. I, should, I apologize for that. Good. Pull one out. April 12th. Anyway. Today is well, I got one. Two days from today. No, it's got to be today. It's my birthday. <laughs> I don't want Bismarck had his second child was born today. I don't want Bismarck. All right. Thank you for that. I like that. Okay. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. By X, seconded second. by... All in favor, please say aye. 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 Leaving meeting. What would it be, Lena?